today was a cold, wet spring day. And I thought, what better to do than do a little watercolor? I decided to use my watercolor with me in the forest book. I really enjoy using this book. It's just a way to relax, enjoy the painting, not worrying about it or having too many expectations. I absolutely love this book. I've only done one other painting in it, but I have just been so busy with trying to get things ready for the shop and everything done. So it's going to feel so good to just sit down and just have fun. Choosing a painting to do in this book is always difficult because there are so many beautiful paintings. And cabin. I almost did the cabin, but I was like, you know what? Let's just something a little simple. So I decided to do the fawn. I figured it's spring, baby animals are being born, and it just reminded me of nice warm spring days. So in the book, they give you everything you will need. So it shows you the colors that you will need and it lets you know what supplies you will need along with a step-by-step -step guide as to how to do the painting which we are going to try to follow all right let's get started all right Let's see what we need here. I sketched mine on another piece of paper in case I ever wanted to try again later. Let me try and zoom in here. There we go. All right, we have our number six round brush. We have our Windsor Newton watercolor paints. And of course we have our coffee. You can't paint without coffee or tea, especially on a really cold rainy day. All right, let's do this. Make some room, roll down the sleeves cause it's freezing in here. All right. This is a new camera angle and setup, so I'm kind of getting used to it. So bear with me here. Looks good. Okay, so we need a round size six brush, three watercolor paints, which we have, white pen, mm -hmm. just a regular white pen, nothing fancy. We need a fine detailed brush. Hmm. Which one do I want to use? All right, here we go. We have a size two. And then we need a black ink pen. Here we go, little micron. Again, nothing too fancy. This is a size two. Okay. So the colors we have today are burnt umber, raw umber, and Indian red. Another sip of coffee before we start. All right, so it says, start by filling in the entire body of the fawn with a light wash of raw umber. It should resemble a light beige. Do not make this layer too dark as it will just be the base for the darker shades. All right, that seems easy enough. I don't know, it didn't say leave a white spot where the ears are and certain things, so I don't know whether to go over those or not go over those. I'll just leave little spots. Okay. Wow, see, this is why I don't do tutorials. 
feel like I got a little too dark over there. Take some off. Around the nose. Around the ear. Mm. All right, let me speed this up a little bit. Mm. It's slowly coming out. I'm slowly seeing it. All right. There we go. A beige fawn. While that wash is still wet, you can drop in some burnt umber to the dark areas of the fawn, such as under the neck, back leg, and the top of the head to create shadow. All right. Around the neck. This might not be dark enough, but we'll start here and we can always add more. Over the back. There we go. Speed this up a little bit. Hey, it's not looking too bad. Get rid of the bangs. I don't know how I gave her bangs. There we go. A little darker. Okay. That part is done. Once your base layer is dry, start creating fine short strokes with a fine detailed brush. The first layer of fur should be more of a mid-tone raw umber. Fill in the ears with a light wash of Indian red for a pink hue. Alright. Get the pink and we'll do the ears first. Again, I'm not sure because they didn't say to leave any white area for the ears. You can see how the ears have the pink and then it's like a white spot and then there is the brown. So I'm kind of making it a little, a little wavy to leave that area open. I'm trying to follow directions and they're making it difficult. I'm really not good at following directions. All right, that looks pretty good. Hmm, maybe a little darker. There we go. Can you see that a little better? We'll do this one. Okay, let's do some itty bitty strokes. Where to start? I think I'll start on the ears. Mm, up, down, what kind of strokes do I do? Mm, okay, we'll start some down. There we go. Wow, this is going to take forever. can't see it too much, but I'm trying to remember it's only the first layer. Alright, definitely speeding this up because, wow. This could take all day. Mm 
So what you didn't see was at one point I <laughs> I dipped my brush in my coffee. So coffee was a no-go. It was very, very sad. <laughs> How many of you have done that where you're painting and you put your your pen your brush in the coffee instead of the water? Yeah. One day I will learn to keep them away from each other. <laughs> Not today. All right. So we are still sitting here making strokes and strokes and strokes. Lots of little fur. I now have a newfound respect for all of those artists who do realistic wild animals. Their hands must be cramping by the end of the day. There we go. Around here. Almost done. We can do this. Yes, finally. A little more here. Oh, yeah, see, it looks a lot better. There. He's looking really furry. Looks more like a sheep. A little more in the dark areas. Define the leg a little bit. Furry, furry, furry. Okay. So then it says continue to build it up. <laughs> it may take about three layers. Okay. Let's do this again. Because my hand's not already cramping. Stroke, 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 stroke. All right, here we go. I gotta say though, it's looking pretty good. I'm not hating it. Mm -hmm. A little over here, a little over there. I took a little bit of water and kind of blended a little bit because it's just looking a little too furry like giving off some sheep vibes oh my honey got me a new cup of coffee thank you you're the best ah <sighs> this is going over here this time all right and back to itty bitty lines I may be saying how annoying these lines are, but this really was very relaxing just to sit there, make lines, <laughs> all different directions, different shades, listen to the rain in the background. Now, there were these little white, like, lines on either side of the fawn's face in the picture. So, finish by adding white spots and highlights to the ears, tail, and body using a white pen. Then use a black pen for the black details, such as the eyes, feet, and nose. Alright, so. Take this. Just took a little water, and I'm just kind of making little lines. 
A little more. That looks about right. Okay. See, there he is. I've zoomed through there. My furry little fawn. He looks cute. All right. So now I'm gonna do the nose. I tried to do the nose with a size two, but it was too small and it was taking way too long. So I graduated to a bigger one and this was way better. Little nose. With eyes. It would have made more sense to go with a smaller one for the eyes, but hey, let's be reckless here. There's one. No, there you go. That came out pretty good. And then we have eye number two. There. Can't forget the eyelashes. Gotta have the eyelashes. Oh, like that, and then over there, and voila, Oh. Okay, and then we do the feet, a little triangle, and then a big, wonky looking triangle-ish thingy, and the other one, color them in. It might be a little long, but that's okay. That's okay today. Oh. Okay. Now on to the white. Okay, start off with his nose. A little highlight right there. Probably should have waited for the black to dry a little more because it didn't want to quite show up. So, mental note. Let the ink dry first. <laughs> okay. I tried to do the white in the ears with this pen and it kind of worked. Maybe if I had a better pen, it might have worked better. But uh, it looks good on video, but up close it was it's a little scratchy and not so, not so vibrant. There we go. I'll do this one. little bit there. Oh, there we go. Let me do the eyes. One little, two. Perfect. And then a little patch of white hair right here on his elbow. That. Oh, now we got to do the little patches of white, little fawn markings. It really is a shame that they lose these. They're so pretty. I think I have to get a better pen. This one's not showing up so well. I don't use a white gel pen very often, so I don't really think to get a good one. And I might have to invest in one. If you guys have any good recommendations, let me know in the comments. There we go. Mm, whoop, whoop, whoop. There you go. There you go. Nope. Over here. There we go. Focus. Oh, and there she is. All right. So she's not winning any contests, but it was really fun to do. It was confusing while painting her because uh, the one in the book is more of a reddish tone. So I was assuming I was going to use more of the Indian red, but it's also difficult because in each palette, uh, different companies, the colors are a little different. So it looks good though. I am very proud of it. So I hope you liked today's video. I thought it would be fun to just sit here and just hang out with you and try this out. 
I loved this book. I recommend this book. I think it was so fun. I will definitely be doing more. So look for it. So look for those videos. And if you have done this book, let me know what you think. And um, yeah, so I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you next time.